those types of games, uh, like against Boston, AUL, Notre Dame, you know, some of the top Clemson, some of the top tier teams, and uh, that had talent during that time, a lot of talent. And so, you know, it was always uh, very, very good games. The thing I remember the most is I had seven sacks. Of course, some of, most of them were on me. Uh, that was the first year starter, and it was very, very hot. Uh, but we moved the football up and down the field. We just couldn't score. Uh, their, their defense was foul. Uh, we couldn't get the ball in the end zone, and that's what kept the game, you know, close. Because our defense was solid as well. They only scored 19 points. Um, and I had, I think, a couple of interceptions in that game um, to, to, to boot. So uh, it was a, a game that we could have won, but we didn't win. And it was a great learning experience for uh, not just myself, but all of us. Because there were some new uh, starters as well out there uh, playing their first uh, UF uh, Florida State game. I mean, UM Florida State game. And uh, so that was, uh, you know, it was good, good for us you know, to be able to experience that. And, you know, we down in the Orange Bowl. So uh, it was just a great atmosphere. Yeah, this game, you know, Tamaric Vano, I remember this game because Tamaric Vano ran back a kickoff 94 yards. He's such an electrifying uh, player, and that set the tone. You know, you got, you know, your team was up most of this game. It was up 13-10, entering the fourth quarter. It was up 16-10 with nine minutes left, and all of a sudden, Jim Sorretto, you know, goes and throws a 33-yard, uh, you know, pass to, you know, wide receiver Lamar Thomas. He's go up 17-16, then Corey, Corey Sawyer made a... Uh, you know, a blunder, you know, uh, drifted into the end zone after on a punt return. He panicked and it was, you know, flipped the legal, you know, forward pass and it became a safety and it was 1916. But the thing is, you drove the team down the field despite, you know, getting hit, like you said, you know, seven sacks, might have had seven sacks, but you had a chance to win that game, not just, you know, you know obviously you had to kick a field goal to tie, but you had a chance to score. But um, it came down to, you know, wide right, you know, Dan Murray. Uh, miss a 39 yard field goal. It's not you no know, easy kick to make, but just looking at that game, man, you just you had a chance, you know, to go in that end zone um, instead of you no know, selling to for you no know, field goal. So it was just you no. Know, the thing about those Florida State teams and at the, in the early 90s, you always had an advantage. You had a lead, especially in 91 and 92, but you always fell short. What was the reason behind that? Because you always outplayed Miami the first three quarters in 91 and 92, but what was the reason behind this, you know, not being able to finish beating Miami? Uh, I mean, like I said, when you have quality teams, uh, they're going to make, they have guys that can make plays too. And so, you know, we weren't fortunate that to, uh, to be able to make the plays at the right time. Um, and they did, you know, we, we, uh, so 91 and 92 years, you know, we were winning, and they ended up coming back in the end, um, at the end. But like I said, they have quality, they're very good football players that make plays. And uh, when the games are close, uh, and two competitive teams, uh, that that's what normally it comes out is who's going to make the most plays, uh, big plays at the right time. And, um, and so. You know, 91, 92, they they able to do it. Uh, in 93, uh, we were able to make the big plays um, to to you know, win our win our, win that game. So uh, we early, and then Devin Bush, you know, 93, he, he secured it with you know a pick six to uh, be able to help us, you know, move on to um, stay uh, stay undefeated, yeah, stay undefeated at that time so it was uh, that was just when you like I said when you're when you have two competitive teams it comes down to who's going to make the, the most big plays at the right time um, and that that's essentially what it came down to I mean there's no rhyme or reason why um, there's a lot of opportunities on both sides uh, but like I said when you have quality teams it depends on who's going to step up and make the plays. Yeah, let's fast forward to um, the Orange Bowl. You, was in, you played in the Orange Bowl again. Uh, 
you know, finished, you know, 11 of 1, you beat Nebraska. And the Seminoles at the time set an NCAA record by winning his eighth straight uh, bowl game, uh, eclipsing US UCLA's mark of seven from 1983 to 1989. You win this game 27-14. You had a big lead. You went up 20 to nothing. Uh, you know, two, two touchdown passes. Talk about regulations of that game as you close out the 92 season with, um, you know, a win in the Orange Bowl against Nebraska. Yes, I mean, it was a good win for us to get that first win of the season. season, going to the 93 season, the preseason of one, the game that you talked about in 93 with Devin Bush making the interception, I want to talk about that game, the 28-10 to 10 win over Miami, that was a big win, obviously, you had a lot of struggles with Miami the last three years at that time, from 1990 to 1992, respectively, and you went 20-10, to 10. and um, it was, at that time, I think, looking back on it, retrospect, you were the better team, yes, it's Miami versus Fall State, so probably, but it was time for Florida State to start beating Miami because Miami had lost so many stars from the previous year. The Heisman Trophy winner, Gino Toretta, a lot of receivers who lost, a lot of defensive players, but you, had, you got to play on the field, obviously, but you definitely put a whooping on the Miami. You, know, you beat them 20-10. Talk about that win, man. You beat them finally 20-10. Uh, I mean, that was Last two years we were up and they had 